So hello guys, welcome back to my channel and one of the most anticipated electric cars here in the Philippines what we have here is the 2023 Weltmeister W5 or if you're Pinoy, you can just pronounce it as Weltmeister W5 or in short, WMW5. So not much people mention this. Weltmeister actually means world champion in German. That actually is the same line that Sebastian Vettel, Formula 1 world champion, used in his team radio. This is not a German brand, by the way. It's a German name, but this is a Chinese company because the CEO of this company used to work at Volvo. So I'd like to thank everyone here and WMBGC for making this review possible. So I don't usually start with awards on some of the cars, but this one immediately when this debuted, back here in July 2022. This is already awarded C Magazine's Electric Car of the Year. You have LED lights all around and not much brands mentioned wading depth with their electric cars but this wading depth of this W5 is 300 millimeters which is more or less the same as the BMW iX. I also have review of that and a Nissan Leaf. That's the only two electric cars I will compare because that's the only electric cars I've driven. Stay tuned for one more that will come soon. So as well the ground clearance is not that tall it's only 174 millimeters but that's fine and being an electric car there is no grill here whatsoever but one down here for your radiator that's just to cool some of the electronics on board this W5 and as you can see on camera here the logo actually illuminates. This will only work once you are charging the vehicle. This is also by 20 so the first bar is 20% 40 60 80 100 so the looks of this w5 i don't mind it actually it to be honest it looks a little bit plain for an electric car but that's the what the standard designs for all electric car but i gotta say this looks better than the nissan leaf because those still have halogen headlights these are all leds and since we're here to charge the w5 this is the dc fast charging port right here it is a big piece this is also what I learned with this W5. So this actually has a GBT charging port. That's the first time I realized there are different kinds of charging ports for every electric car. For example, CCS1 is for North America, CCS2 is for Europe. And this one is uh, mainly for China. And sadly, there is no infrastructure yet here in the Philippines where you can charge the W5 for a fast charger. But where on earth do you charge this car? We'll, we'll go there really later on at the year. And I do like this speed. Just looks like a Voltes 5 character. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> I'm a bit new to this car still. So here now at the side profile of the W5. Okay, it's your usual crossover or more say an electric crossover. But good to know this has disc brakes all around. I do like the wheels. It kind of mimics like Lamborghini Rebenton style wheels. You have your repeaters on your side mirror and cameras underneath for your 360 degree camera. We'll get to that later on. And my dumb self uh, was so confused how to open the doors because this actually like Aston Martin style door handles. You just push it and then... That's how it opens, which I find really cool. So here now at the rear of the W5. So I gotta say the LED headlights, I mean the whole thing looks like a Porsche Bacan. And unlike some of the Chinese carbons, at least this is a functioning LED light bar. And there's a very cool Easter egg here right on the side. Being a usual, what, electric crossover. I don't mind the cladding, it's not too OA. And if you're wondering where on earth can you charge this car, it is right here. There's a second charging port. This is for your AC charger for slow charging. For example, if you want to charge this at your house for a 220 volt socket, this will take from 0 to 100%. That will be done in 16 hours. And then here you have your reverse camera here. And then I like this part of the W5. You have a blacked out WM logo. This is the only one in its class that has halogen lamps for your plate number. But I don't mind it. And as well, I didn't mention this in my BMW iX review and the Nissan Leaf. So since being an electric car, this is already safe from the Evida law. That means if you buy an electric car, you're exempted from coding. So that's good to know. And hybrid vehicles, let's not forget. And open the boot up. You have an electronic tailgate. It's slow, but hey, at least there still is. So as well being a crossover, this is really spacious. So with all of the seats up, you have a total of 488 liters. And when you fold all of the seats down, you have a total of 1,500 liters. And this is your charging cable for your ACE charger. And being an IT student, this has a three pin plug. Do not remove this if you own a W5. As an IT student, we usually take this off immediately for our laptops. So do not do this for any vehicle, by the way. 
you don't have a tall load lift and then this particular car doesn't have a spare tire but you can option it from the dealer if needed and sadly not much toys here if you have two small cubby spaces it's a no cover you can start underneath the false floor and on the left side you have a very bright halogen light and a 12 volt socket so that's about it here with the exterior and the boot of the w5 i'll show you the interior There we go. So this is the interior of the W5. Oh, that sounds solid. So the door touch, I can somewhat compare it to, to the GR1 brands. Not the, particularly with the BMW iX, but close enough. I dig this interior. This is actually really, really cool. Just being honest, I thought the Ford Ranger had the largest screen available in any car but no this one is actually the biggest infotainment in our market so what we have here is a 15.6 inch infotainment screen so it is literally like the size of a tv already okay there's a lot to talk about with the infotainment system so let's do that for a separate mo moment let's talk about everything here in the interior so start here in the door card look at the material in the quality here it's all soft pads here and i like this black metallic theme here on the door because actually really futuristic white leather here white stitching and then soft pads for your elbow and what i also noticed with the leather here it's not the hard kind of leather not the more of the durable side it is like literally leather and then you have your window switches here so the speakers here are wm sonic their own take on speakers i'll try to demo that later on when i get to drive immediately notice where on earth do you lock the car it is right here in the center console and listen to this So I've never heard that in any electric car. It literally makes a sound when you um, lock the car, which I find really, really cool. <laughs> so at least it's not too silent in here in the cabin. And the sound of it, like the home page for this infotainment screen, it sounds like a, what the old Windows XP. <laughs> That's actually really funny. So continuing here in the door, you have cubby spaces and cup holders on each side. My thin motor jug fits. And then here on the left side, you have two air conditioning vents with the aluminum trim again. And then below that, you have adjustments here for your headlights, opening the tailgate, and then for your parking sensors. And then electric heating steering wheel function, I guess I'll ask later. And then here in the steering wheel itself, feels really, really sporty to the touch. And then there's a lot of gloss back here. And yeah, it's a little bit dirty, but it is what it is. So on the left side, you have your cruise control buttons. This does not have adaptive cruise control yet. And on the right side, you have adjustments for your infotainment system. And then your button here for adjusting the 12.3 inch digital instrument displayed there in the middle. It's very simple layout, not much adjustments until I drive it. I'll know later as well. And I like the dashboard. I mean, if the dashboard set really really low so visibility throughout is excellent even as you can see in the back the c pillar there's a corner window no issues with visibility and to make things better you have a 360 degree camera and then okay the quality here in the dashboard everything soft touch here i like the white leather that continues throughout the dashboard glove box okay that's pretty small and then below the infotainment system you have two usb ports and a space for your phone you can actually fit the biggest phone available like example the iphone 14 pro max and then below the center console you have a 12 volt socket and then spaces for phones the command console here yeah is all in gloss black but at least for your drive functions they're just matte black but to turn on the vehicle you have to actually press p as well which i find very weird and this has drive modes just two of them eco and sport you can adjust the steering mode as well same modes eco and sport then there's a cover here open that you have Two cup holders just fits my water jug here in the center console box a rolling shutter center console box there's a storage tray underneath and then there is one usb port right there and it's so deep that it can actually fit my water jug you can fit more there if you want and then above here you have gloss black stuff again an sos button buttons for your panoramic sunroof right here it is really huge it stretches all the way to the your passengers sunglasses holder visor vanity mirror the light's not working for some reason oh there's no light then don't nah all right that's fine 
So as well if you notice right here in the steering wheel there is a camera here. So this button is been disabled for our market but actually in China that already acts as a CCTV camera. So in case there's example what I've been told only if you commit a crime they can actually track you already because that has facial recognition. At least it's been disabled here in the Philippines. But I think that will be very very useful for future, not just for this Weltmeister, but to future vehicles, ice engines and electric vehicles. That's actually a feature I like. So let's go to the biggest talking point of this Weltmeister W5 is the 15.6 inch infotainment screen. So let's start here with this biggest button here. So this is actually for your Bluetooth settings. At least this car has Bluetooth. And this screen is so big, you cannot actually see the backspace button. <laughs> and then second button, you have for your car info here. You can actually remember the mode of the car here if you want. So you have here your driver assist. The auto hold function yet again is still here like every other new car. And then for adjusting the tailgate, the height of it. And then the ambient lighting here. And then the preference, the brightness of the infotainment screen, let's put it to bright so you can all see. And then the one below, your vehicle settings. This is so cool. You can actually see the whole chassis of the car and the electric motors where it's all placed. So if you press this, the one touch quick check, tire pressure is normal. So that's how you check your TPMS beside the vehicle settings. This is for your battery information and I like there is a guide here so example if you need to go somewhere that's 25 kilometers away 50 100 so on and so forth it will display the power consumption and then go back you have your for your music here USB not found and on the far right side this camera button here this is actually for your onboard dash cam. That's what I like as well with this Weltmeister W5. You have an onboard dash cam already. And it is so crisp. It's, well, it's like your usual dash cam. Yeah, and I find it really handy. You don't have to buy a separate dash cam now. If you're going to buy this W5. And then here in the center, your 360 degree camera. The resolution ain't the best out there. But it's since again, the infotainment screen is so big, it makes up for it at least. And I like as well the inputs are really really responsive. There's a lot of settings there. You can even record when you park just in case you hit something or someone hits you. And as well you can adjust the brightness of it. Then below that you have for your music. Oh for your radio sorry. And then finally you have the car settings itself. Their Bluetooth. Oh there's an onboard Wi-Fi as well. And as you can see right down below there's your adjustments for your air conditioning system right there so i'll test out the air conditioning later on as well when i get to drive this so this is the biggest drawback of this weltmeister w5 there is no apple carplay nor android auto yet you already know by now why those aren't available since this one is made in china but hopefully later on down the line they will uh, add apple carplay and android auto but i asked miss hazel herself most likely apple carplay will be added in the future not android auto unless Hopefully you can get both later on as I said in the future. So, oh yeah, the seats of this W5 as well are really nice. They actually look like sport bucket style seats. So, okay, there's enough ball string so it keeps you in place. I can't wait to drive this, but before we do that, I will show you the back seats. So these are the rear seats of the Valtmeister W5. That was just as good as in front. So same layout like in the door cards. You have now smaller cubby spaces and cup holders on each side. Still fits my water jack at least. Now this is the nicest thing about this uh, W5. Oh wait, before I go here about in the back seats, I just remembered. You have electronic adjustments for all the seats in front. And right now here in the back, this is so spacious in here. Like feet room, knee room, and headroom is all excellent even though you have a panoramic sunroof doesn't eat my headroom that much i'm only 5'4 and yeah that's what i like as well with this what w5 the windows are so large there's so much natural light coming in i don't even have to adjust the exposure in the review anymore at least i like as well the floor of this w5 it's so flat i know my feet gets a little bit eaten with the seats but it's not too bad it feels less claustrophobic here comparing only to the Nissan Leaf because there's so much humps and what the batteries are set so high I don't even have like tie support anymore but this W5 is actually really good 
And then as well here you have a central armrest with pop-out cup holders with clear C grips. Just fits my water jug. And then if I sit here in the middle, you ne nearly have a flat floor. There's a transmission tunnel hump, but it is very, very small. And yeah, sitting here in the middle, it's a little bit harder than the left and right side of the seats, but it's all right here. I gotta say, it's way more spacious than the Leaf. Not as good as the iX, but this is just a what compact crossover. But yeah, I like, it's really good. I like the space here. And then in the middle, you have not one, not two, but three air conditioning vents. Then there's your adjustments right there. And then further down below that, you have one USB port and a cubby space. And then behind the seats, I have no idea what this what thing is. And then you have two leather map pockets on each side. And then I haven't said this in a while. You have as well two Isofix anchor points on each side. And LED lights here on the side. Yeah, pretty simple here in the back. But at least you have three air conditioning vents. Which is a very, very big plus for me now. So, that's about it here in the interior of the Weltmeister W5. Let's talk about the electric motor. So this is what's powering the Weltmeister W5. There's nothing. <laughs> Kidding aside, this is only to cover some of the electronics here. So, I mean, there's at least a Weltmeister logo here. And only thing you can touch here is literally your washer fluids here. And then here on the right side, you can open for your battery, a 12 volt battery, your conventional car battery. And I like as well, there's gas struts here. And unlike what BMW you can literally open the hood at will because there's a lot going on with the iX that's only a comparison with this W5 at least you can open the hood but sadly there is no frank here for the W5 so let's talk about the electric motor of this so the Weltmeister W5 is powered by a 52 kilowatt hour battery that produces 215 horsepower and 315 newton meters of torque and take note this is only a front wheel drive vehicle and 0 to 100 kilometers per hour as they say is 8.8 seconds and yet again this is a really heavy car just put the exact weight here on screen so that's about it here with the electric motors of the Weltmeister W5 let's go for a drive right I also just remembered something uh, shout out to Kako Teono and Jack of autodeal.com.ph if you're planning to adjust the the volume of the infotainment system here it's actually right here right there <laughs> that's so funky right this is it when i'm driving the Weltmeister w5 i'm not gonna floor it immediately because i don't want anything flying it oh there's a little hum oh okay i like this usually with electric cars it's Okay, there's a nice hum with the cabin here, with the sound installation. Of course, it cannot be too quiet. And I'm just in level 2 regeneration. It's not as strong as the leaves, but it will stop eventually. So I'll just put it back to 1 first. And then actually, you can turn it off. So there are only 2 modes of the region braking. Sorry, 2 levels of region braking. Alright, this is it. Sport mode. Then... Okay, there's one big correction I need to make, but I already did it, but I'm gonna say it again. The acceleration time of this is not actually 8.8 .8 seconds, it's actually done in 8.3 seconds, but as you can see the first, what, the first acceleration, it's really peppy, I like it, and I like the sound of it. I'm not sure if it's the same in eco mode, but the sound sounds really similar to a, what, Formula E race car. Oh, <laughs> I like that. If you want the Formula E experience, E experience you gotta get this car and sport mode like every other crossover it tends to weight up against in eco mode and surprisingly for an electric car there's good feedback with the steering wheel it's actually really good so let's put the steering to standard and just in eco for now of course it won't be as fast as the iX because that's a whole nother level but it's still peppy and I guess it's as peppy as the Nissan Leaf and knowing this is a Weltmeister the quality here just feels a little bit more special and knowing Veltmeister I consider them as what a luxury 
brand already. This one takes the cake for me. It is really, really good. And as well, if you suddenly mass the throttle, you will have instantly 350 newton meters of torque. That is the advantage with electric cars. They give you instant torque. That's why I had so much fun driving the Nissan Leaf, the BMW iX. And probably with the budget, um, for comparison, you can get what? Something like this already for comparison with the price. Yeah, I think this will be a good uh, consideration for me since I kind of like uh, to have an electric car now. Since the BMW I exchanged my uh, vision with electric cars, I to this day I lost my range anxiety now with electric cars. And knowing from the time I filmed the Nissan Leaf last year up to now, suddenly our infrastructure is slowly going up. And then here, Eco mode. Okay, in eco mode, I immediately notice the power is more subtle. It's not like in sport mode, it's in your face. And then I noticed as well in standard now with this thing, it feels a little bit lighter than usual. Well, it's not as light as some of the crossovers I tried where it feels a little bit numb. There's still good feedback with this, even though, yet again, I said this is in standard mode. So I'll just leave it now in sport. Oh, yeah, that's what's also cool. Even though you're in eco mode, you can still at will change the steering mode standard or sport even though you're in eco mode this cabin alone feels so special and comparing just being honest with a ford ranger wildtac since that has a 12 inch screen this one i find it's not too big it's certainly the right amount and you'll get used to the what well, the controls here in the infotainment system i find it really easy to to learn and as well like i said earlier in the showroom the onboard dash cam is already a big plus for me Then even though in eco mode with the auto hold, it's not jerky, doesn't get, it's not intrusive as well. Okay, I can feel this car wants to keep on going already. So the air conditioning of this as well is surprisingly cold. Not decent level, but very close. So here, eco mode, just floor it. Oh my god! <laughs> yep, the sound is pretty much the same. Even though you're in eco mode and and then sport mode, yeah, I love the sound. If I hope you can hear that on camera, it literally sounds like a Formula E race car. I love it. Yeah, I put it back to sport mode. Yeah, it it's so eager to launch forward. Then here, U-turn test. Okay, going back to sport mode now. It tends to wait up ever so slightly, and the handling is way more sharper than in eco mode. Okay, I'm just tapping the throttle. It's ah, oh, this is not so. I mean, I'm so surprised. And you're wondering about range as well. This sir is capable of 403. 403 kilometers. So as well, there are two variants for this W5, but so far the Philippines only gets the 400 kilometer range. But knowing 403 kilometers range, that's already a lot for an electric car. I think that's almost as close as the BMW iX but way more than the Nissan Leaf. And as well, I didn't mention about the price. This is also as well priced close to the Leaf at 2,548,000 pesos. But to be honest, you get a lot for your money right now. And yes, like everybody's complaint with this W5 is the lack of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But then again, like Tesla's, the number one electric car brand in the world, this is capable of having software updates so like i said as well earlier in the showroom most likely this will be updated with apple carplay but hopefully they put bluetooth mirror link soon to us because i am an android user and then okay there's a little bit of a bubbling, but it's not too much <laughs> oh. oh my gosh i just skidded <laughs> Oh my god! Yo! Right. Enough! <laughs> That's so fast! Wow, that is so fast! Yeah, do you have to get used to that with electric cars when you floor it? Because they'll just skid your tires like out of nowhere, unlike internal combustion engines. Okay, let's, let's come down. Let's pull back to eco mode. And I'll just leave the steering in sport mode because it just feels way better. And then here, over humps. Yes, it's not the highest uh, ground clearance for a crossover, 174 millimeters only, but the thing over comes here, like in the Mine Museum, here BGC, 
Okay, guess over them pretty alright as well. And this is the big surprise for me. Yes, there's a little bit body lean, but unlike every other electric car I've tried out so far, this feels so comfortable. The suspension is soft, it's not too stiff. To my surprise. you get to high speeds really really fast so going back to the suspension there's a little bit body lean but the suspension is not too stiff unlike every other electric car I've driven this is even a Galaxy more comfortable than the Nissan Leaf to my surprise the Nissan Leaf is already a proven what electric car but for this W5 I prefer this over the Nissan Leaf hands down and then here of patches of road oh wow Yep, I can confirm the NVH is very very similar to luxury cars, especially the Germans. Oh my god, this is I this exceeded all of my expectations. This is so good. Right. So three out of three of electric cars I've driven so far, all of them are really good in their own way. But Surprise, I know the BMW iX is too much for me, but for bang for the buck This is probably one of the best bang for the buck electric cars ever This is such a good introduction of Weltmeister here in the Philippines with the W5 So hopefully we'll have more what electric cars from them coming soon because this is this is really something. I'm enjoying driving this W5. So I haven't tried this yet. Let's go back to level one regenerated braking. Ah, okay. So at level one, it feels like you're tail braking only, and then level two. Okay, just being honest, the swivel wheel exactly like in the Volvo. You already know why. It's a little bit delayed to my liking. It's a little bit confused. It's the same button for your driving mode for Eco and Sport. Just a small nitpick. And then... Oh yeah, look. I'm I'm just using the throttle and it's just stopping by itself. Okay, let's just, just go fast a little bit. Here, 30 kilometers per hour. I'm not on the brake demonstration purpose only. Yeah, it is much much stronger than of course level one, but it's not to the point uh, It will stop the car like when you mash the brakes like that So yeah, it's, Turn that off And what else to talk about this car? Oh, yeah, since this being a 52 kilowatt hour Motor if you're planning to charge this at home For example, like I said 16 hours this will only cost but if for Meralco, that's what they said to me, Meralco state of charge, 10 pesos per kilowatt hour, 1 kilowatt hour. So that's a total of 520 pesos. So for a full <laughs> full tank of juice of electricity, 520 pesos is a lot. Comparison for my car, 520 pesos is only like what? Uh, 7 liters of fuel and that's not even full yet. with this W5 it exceeded all of my expectations so what an introduction as well for Weltmeister here in the Philippines hope you bring more products here in our country so that concludes my review of the Weltmeister W5 I'd like to thank WM Motors BGC Miss Hazel Sir Christoph Sir JP and then Sir Kelvin for making this test drive review possible I guess I, I, think, I think I gotta call my mother <laughs> I need one of this in my life it's such a good crossover so, <laughs> yet again, hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more future car reviews and more electric car reviews. Bye-bye.